I'm just going to try to make a quick one. It's probably not going to be quick, but I already know you guys don't stick around and listen to shit anyway. Uh, <laughs> either way, it's Q4. You guys have no idea what to expect because a lot of you just got here this year, much like many of your famed YouTube favorites that just continue to fucking lie on a regular basis to the entire community so they can keep getting that YouTube check, baby. Um, anyway, I started getting new subscribers out of nowhere, and I'm not sure why, so I figured I might as well make a video then. Um, I guess it's because of the big five video I made in Q3. I don't know, probably. Um, and someone asked questions about it. My sentiment has not changed on that. So to make that notably understood that it's significantly owned by institutions, it went from not being on a top 10 short list to being number one overnight in Q3. Um, and uh, that video I made talking about saying this is most likely a trap, but uh, if you're smart and you get out before they tank it, and if you know how to play a, a call put strategy, you, you can win with them. That's another one that's very similar to Catapult. You're, you're looking for cycles. You're looking for their return cycles. Um, you know, it'll be flat. It'll, it'll have some hit in a quarter for a week or two, or maybe three if you're lucky. And then it'll just be straight downside. But uh, when you get into Q4, this is uh, this is kill or be killed. This is hunting season. This is the Super Bowl for traders, for everyone. Big money, individual traders, everything. Q4 is that time. It's your time to showcase your skills. It will make or break you. You cannot trade in Q4 like you have traded throughout the entire year. You actually, well, I can because I basically have to trade like I'm in Q4 every quarter. Um... But a lot of this is stick and move style shit. There is going to be drops. There's going to be pops. There is going to be all kinds of big money. Uh, making sure they hit their end of the fiscal year numbers that they need to hit. And they're going to be, you know, close and short positions to make sure they're profitable for EOI. They're going to be taking profits for shit that they've been holding on to all year or maybe for the past second half of the year whatever you're gonna see it all over the place you're gonna see these fucking drops these tanks they're most likely gonna happen in the after hours um where you know you can't really benefit from anything because that's how they do it but that's what q4 is i mean it's there's so much shit the end of the year is very very important the end of the fiscal year is super important for big money and institutions and all them motherfuckers so there's going to be drops and pops everywhere so you should do a lot of sitting on the sidelines, honestly. I mean, Q4 is it's, it's day trader's dream. Like, if you're able to freely day trade all you want, it's it's a fucking dream. Literally, like, you get in here, put a grand in here, fucking make two grand, get out, wait. You know, you do it all day, all day, everywhere, all across the damn market. Um, but that's really all it is. Uh, it, it's dangerous to hold on to anything at all for any extended period of time um sdc this happens to be one obviously one that i talked about well before anyone ever talked about this thing that was highly short and uh when i spoke about it we were back here and we got to play around with it make some money up to eight dollars and you know, if you wanted to stay in it that was your deal uh, but it's another cycle that we had to wait for this looks like it is a intentional drop um this doesn't look like someone who was kind of wailed in and was just waiting for the squeeze of this thing and it didn't happen and they decided to bail you'll see this a lot when there's heavily shorted stocks there'll be a massive massive move down uh usually in the after hours just setting up uh, setting up for a significant close of short positions at the cheapest price they can possibly get for the end of the year. That's not a guarantee. Let me make that fucking clear. That's not a guarantee ever. Nothing is guaranteed. Not a damn thing. No one knows. This is all probabilities. You know, that's that, that's it. You know, intuition, probabilities. You need to make your own decisions on things. This could very easily be someone that did just bail out. Uh, or they may have cut it down and wanted to fucking you know screw some people over that decide to buy in heavily and then cut it down more i doubt that's the case just because this is like at its historical low in over a year it, it hasn't been this low since march of 2020 um and it's had the shit shorted out of it like all fucking year so i would imagine <laughs> that this is just a play to push it down 
uh, to prepare it for returns, but they may not do that. They, they may be comfortable holding on to what they're holding on to through Q1. They may not give a fuck about their SDC bottom line if uh, they're in a bunch of other positions that they're, you know, their end of the fiscal year numbers look fat. Um, nothing's guaranteed, which again is why it's very dangerous to hold anything. I mean, unless you've like, like this, like this is, it's still a gamble, but it looks like it is being set up for closed positions because of its short interest and all that shit that's been going on with it all year. You'll see it a lot. It starts November 1st and it usually goes through December 15th, the middle of December. You'll see shit just getting killed, um, shit popping up. It's just, it's all over the fucking place and you just, you gotta be ready to pounce, ready to get in, ready to get out. Um, you know, if you can, if you're willing to take the gamble, this is, you know, something you could buy out to December or January in anticipation of a big closeout of positions um, and maybe a move back up to, excuse me, back up to like the $5 region or whatever, maybe even back up to 8 Who knows? Uh, but a lot of times you'll see in the third week of December, things start rising again and they usually continue to rise. Um, and if it's not before Christmas, it's right after Christmas. It's right at the start of Q1. Shit will start rising up and usually keep rising until close to the end of December. Uh, and then right, you know, 30 days before Q2, uh, shit will start, you know, you'll start seeing a lot of shorting and things take place during that time frame. Uh, but we'll see. You just have to be very, very careful. Very, very careful in this shit. Um, let's see. we got a... If you got an AMD when I first talked about it, you're fine. Even with the cool off it's taken right now, which it needed to, like, look at the, it had to. Um, they tried to make it cool off, like, here, and it said no. And they tried to do it again here, and it said no. Uh, <laughs> but it very well, it, it may start running. It's it's literally, it's it's getting to the bubbling point for me to where I, I may jump back in it. Uh, was waiting to see if it was going to get dropped down to about 135 to 137, somewhere in between there, and ride it out. Um, but it's almost to the level that I'm expecting it to keep breaking through and moving upward for another fucking push, uh, which is very possible. Not all stocks get tanked. Not all of them get crushed. Not all of them die in Q4. Some of them continue their journey upward and onward and, and bust straight through into Q1, uh, riding high. So, I mean, but again, if you got into this when I first talked about it and you're long in it, you're, you're fine, even with that cool off, even if it did drop down to 130, if you got into it around 100 when I was talking about it, you're, <laughs> you're fine. Um, but still, either way, it's a, it's a stick and move mindset. It really is. And this is where if you, you know, you learned that put strategy for the newer investors when, uh, you know, we went over it for those of us that made money in catapult when i was talking about it and going over it and explaining how to play it and you really needed to familiarize yourself with puts and learn how to have a call put strategy so you could win both ways in their return cycle um you know you you do the same thing q4 all over the place pretty much uh, yeah because this shit decided it wanted to have a day again starting to look like it's uh I said it the last video I made, it looks like it's getting ready to set up for another return cycle. Like I said that back here, it looked like it was getting ready to set up for another return cycle. And it may be the EOI return cycle from all this shit back here that they tanked down. No, no guarantees, nothing, none. Um, but if you play this the same way you did here, you'll probably fare okay. Uh, and there is always a chance, like I said, when... A lot of uh, hedge funds and institutions are short and have been short on any particular stock all year or during the last half of the year or whatever it is. You'll usually see a lot of end of the year moves, a lot of bangs for your buck. Um, the difference between now where this is and where we were here, this fucking options chain is like structured to the teats. Like literally. It is structured for next Friday at five, six, seven, eight, and even into nine. And we haven't had any fucking retail pour in yet. You can always look here for that. If you ever want to know if retail's in anything, go to the very farthest strike that there is and see how much open interest it is. Um, that's how you'll know. So this is institutions and shit and big money that structured this chain. So they it's signaling and they're saying they're anticipating a big end of the year move but you know 
We'll see. There are never any guarantees. Uh, and I'll show you right here what I'm, what I'm talking about with this. If you if you think I'm kidding about you know the AMC retail crowd and how they trade, um, yeah, look at that. For tomorrow, 85, 85 for tomorrow. This is not big money. This is not institutions that are just willing to waste money for I don't know what particular reason. I mean, I've watched this whole thing unfold all year, and I'm an options trader, so I, I know what shit looks like, and I've seen shit over the course of, you know, the past, this whole year especially, but um, I've never seen shit like this until this year. Never until this whole squeeze shit and the whole to the moon yolo shit and everything i have never seen options chains that have more open interest at the furthest fucking strike price when it's tomorrow tomorrow 70 like look let's just go down the line and look at this shit even at fucking 65 there's 7,000 70 75 these are all people that do not know how to trade options they have no idea none um 60 fucking 16,000 jobs. There's still more at the 85. And then at 55, there's 16,000. 50. 50 is the only one. The only one that has more than 85. That's crazy. And that's still an insane bet for tomorrow. That's just fucking crazy. It's literally insane. But that's how you know if retail's in a stock or they've poured into a stock. Yeah, go to the options chain, look at the furthest fucking strike price, and, and, and see what it looks like. Um, you got everyone out here freaking out and lying again. Just the stupid shit. Adam Aaron's tanking this. Adam Aaron's selling his shares, and it's, it's tanking the stock price. Adam Aaron has 1%. 1% of the outstanding shares to himself, which is like five to 600,000 shares. That's all he has, and he's selling it over the course of three months. That's how it's going to be distributed, so that would be like 175000 to 200000 each month. Now, you look at the first damn hour of trading today. Oh, fucking zoom in on this shit. Let's see if it's a million or not. Almost a million. 909000 That was a straight down move that wasn't even a dollar wasn't even a dollar a million shares and just assume you can even assume that half of that was buys so 500,000 wasn't even a, a dollar drop not even a dollar drop and that's what he's selling <laughs> his shit that he's selling is not even really enough to make this thing budge during the day at all and everyone's like, oh, he's going down because he's selling shit. He did it to us. He did it to us. If you actually listen to any of the earnings calls, the one in July and this past one, uh, he already talked about this and what was going on and said the amount of shares he had and what he was selling them for. This is running the same bit I said that it was running back here. This is the reason I, I literally... I've called this shit within like two dollars of where it would be most likely from here from here with the when the bull cycle started and all i'm doing is changing percentages to match the numbers here from here from this i mean you can follow the damn rsi and compare it stop it here and then start it here this whole section was fluky this was not supposed to be a part of the of the game uh, and they're damn near identical. Like, they are so close enough the way they move. Uh, you can easily tell that, like, 90% of this fucking entire stock is controlled <laughs> by fucking algorithms, by high-frequency trading systems. You know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you, the 80% or whatever that own them, are, are outdone by the 90%. That just means 90% of the stock that's being traded the volume in total, which they can take a million shares and turn that into a hundred million in a day. And that, and that, you know, they don't need the actual outstanding shares to control 90% of a stock's movement. Um, but that's how I've come up with this. When everyone, I told you, and everyone was like, oh, we're in May, we're in May, when it started turn around here. And I told you, no, we're, we're not. We're most likely here. And there's probably going to be a red week that follows this, because this is where we're at. This is where we're at. 
And we're about to find out, literally, right now, we are about to find out if this is going to happen again. Because this right here, this part, very well could have been this. This could have been what was in the design here. And this was all FOMO and other shit that came in and fucked the whole entire game up. Fucked it up for them. Um, so we're going to find out. We are going to find out. Tomorrow is basically the Monday that this was. Right here. Tomorrow is going to dictate pretty much what this is doing. Should be a, should be a better day than today. Um, not by much, but it should be a better day than today. And then next week is going to let us know, you know, what's up with this program. Or if this right here should have been turning down and going red, but all the FOMO and all the hype in that last two weeks of May created a storm that, you know, fucked up the hedge funds and shit. But this is literally, the, I'm not a fucking genie. I, I, all I do is look at numbers and crunch them and look at percentages and... You know, that's it. That's all. To follow this program. To follow this algorithm. The way it's been trading. That's it. It's the same thing. This thing here is this same fucking shit here. It's the same damn thing. So, you know, it's the reason it's going down is because it was meant to go down. The, the algorithm that's trading the majority of these shares, it, it should be going down. That's what it should be doing. It's not Adam Aaron's 500,000 shares that wouldn't even equate to a dollar movement down, trading it during the market hours and shit, so, you know, we'll see what happens, I mean, this is it, this is, I told you guys it would be like November or December, it's gonna be November apparently that, you know, we find out what happens here. Is this a part of the program? Is this actually a part of it? Is there going to be a big boom coming? Or is it just going to be a leg up and it's following this here? This little bad boy right here. Or is it going to be red? Is it, is it going to, you know, was this all fluke? Not a part of the program here. And it's going to continue on the way that it initially intended to. And it be red. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, you got the end of the year banking on it. That's why I said that you would most likely see a bigger move upward, not just because of this, but because it's end of the year and, you know, they got to hit those numbers and show profit on positions and shit. So you may see a lot of short positions start getting closed within the next 30 days, maybe. Uh, but again, they have a fucking high frequency trading algorithm that can take a million shares and trade it back and forth at lower and lower and lower prices, just fractions of a penny lower, millions of times throughout the day, periodically, to drive the price down and then close out short positions and then repeat the process and close them out and keep this shit bouncing between 30 and $50. That's it. They do it everywhere. It's all over the market. It's all over the market, but you know, we're going to find out next week is going to tell us tomorrow basically really is going to tell us if, if this is a going to be following this trend at a minimum, this trend here that it does in the program, that maybe that's what this was supposed to do. And then the FOMO and everything fucked it up and boom, that happened. Uh, or if this really is a part of the program and it's going to be a big move or if it's going to go red. If it's going to continue downward trend and go red. That's where we're at. That's what this is. That's where it's at. I don't give a shit who you listen to and what you believe. None of them have been right about anything. There's no Moaz on the 12th or the 20th. There's no Adam Aaron's 1% of the float that he owns is not tanking the stock. It's following the program that has been designed specifically for it. That's what it's doing. That's it. That's all. It's really that simple. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, fingers crossed, obviously, that you know, it has a nice move. I, mean, I know I'm going to grab a position tomorrow based on what it does. Um, just in anticipation of, you know, I, I don't want to miss anything. And maybe the after hours or the pre-market, if it starts going crazy on Monday or whatever. Uh, but that'll all be based on what it does tomorrow. I'll be based on that. So, be careful in Q4. You know, you need to put your skills to the test. You need to be a hunter. You know, you need to be the predator, not the prey. 
do not hang on to shit long, long, long term, and unless it's like already made some moves that look like that's probably going to be the end of it, and it's just going to go up. But you know, just use your head. My, that's my biggest problem. Like I said, I've I've churned out more than 15, but you know, 15 tickers that I've thrown out to you guys collectively are up 4,200 percent this year. 4,200 percent collectively. AMC has not done that. Not you. You got all your shit in this thing that isn't making any money for people. And you're missing opportunities. Like I said back here, by now you should already have the positions you want or are going to keep in AMC for your moonshot or whatever. So you should be putting money elsewhere um, to do its thing. Like this one, again, not this one, but NXTD. If y'all got into that shit when I told you to and you traded it the way I told you to. If you guys talked about it on the 6th, but even back before this, if you got in there and did what I said and got positions, anything you got, you got positions out to November at a minimum and hung on to them bitches, this shit moved a thousand percent, a thousand percent. AMC didn't even move a thousand percent on June 2nd. See what I'm saying here? If you would have put ten grand into this just in stock when I told you to and you were holding it, you would have made a hundred thousand dollars this day. And then if you were still holding it through October into November, those stock proud of those prices there, you basically would have fucking doubled that. You would have had like two hundred grand in less than a month in a couple weeks. A couple weeks. And this is why I don't do this anymore, and I'm not doing this anymore, because I already know there's people out there that took these plays and took the things that I told you to take, and I know how much they're up. I know a lot of you made my... I didn't even get to enjoy this. I was only able to afford to hold my positions to the 15th, and I was actually expecting a move up to like a dollar fifty Thursday and Friday. And I guess they knew that I was anticipating that. <laughs> I had to take a small profit here. It's a fucking truck payment I had to make, so then shit happens. Um, but yeah, you know, there's been so much money all around the market. All around the market, man, to be made. You should already have your positions in this. You should already be good. But, you know, it's your money. It's your life. Do what you want to do with it. But just so you know, this is not going down because Adam Aaron dropped 200,000 shares this month and is dropping 200,000 next month and 200,000 the following month. It's going down because that's part of the program right now. That's what it's supposed to do. So, see what happens tomorrow. But yeah, to my new subs, um, I'm not entirely sure what content you were here for <laughs> but if it was big five shit uh, again that video was just to put out there for you know my other subscribers that were branching out into other parts of the market and trying to make money and new to this and I didn't want them to get fucking clapped uh, so try and tell them to be careful and nothing's changed really in that um, you know it is the end of the year though it was significantly shorted but you know, who knows? Who knows where it's going to go, where it could go. Uh, maybe they're going to decide to close out the shorts and it, and it blows up. Who, who fucking knows? But, it, you know, it already looks like it's doing that. Been doing that this month. So, if they're going to close them all out, I don't know. If they already did, I don't fucking know. I'm not really following it. Um, like I said, all I can say is be careful. Because right here, these little traps right here this shit hits a gainer list and then you get uneducated investors who are like "Ooh, I'm getting in this because I see and heard had a bunch of short interest it's gonna squeeze and you're sitting in it and then this happens and you're like oh look at all the money I'm making and you're like oh yes this is so great I'm making so much and then it dies and then you're sad and then you probably sell it and you're like I knew it oh 
just be careful. That's, that's all I can say. It's Q4. It's diabolical. It's messy. You have got to be on your shit. You literally have got to be on your shit. If something tanks, you may want to take that as an opportunity to jump in for the day. Ride the wave, because usually when things tank, they'll have a day or two of nice upward motion. Um, and then you can get out, and then may, hopefully you avoid it tanking again. Or if it keeps going up the next couple days, maybe that was the only move that's going to make going down. So just be careful out there, guys. Be careful. It's a fucking monster.